You know, by saying that you believe that Jesus is eternal yes. and that you say you believe that he is God's representative yes. in this way, you've already left Islam. But regardless of which one of us is right, if it's been changed by so much as a word, then Muslims should dismiss it as being from Allah. It's, are you going to follow the evidence? That's the question you've got to wrestle with. Will you follow the evidence? Have you got the courage to follow the evidence? Now answer me this question. Did Peter and Matthew, did Peter and Matthew and James, did they know Muhammad 2000 years ago? No. So this can't be Muhammad. No, but Jesus would have access to that kind of information. Yeah, but, but, he, but he says the apostles know him. Okay, fine, fine. I'll concede. I'll concede that point. Okay, that's great. I argue that the Holy Spirit is the angel Jibreel that made the revelation to... So let, let's, let's look at this angel Jibreel. Right, and let's see if it, if, it, if it matches to be the angel Jibreel. Okay? When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, right? That is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. Now, does the angel Gibriel proceed of from the Father? Yes, he's a direct representative of God. Does, it, does he come from God? Yes. So, but now, think what you're saying here, because that creates an equality between Gibriel and Allah. It doesn't. If, He's been sent by God. No, that that no, it's coming from God. Listen, look at look at the words. God, yeah. Look, I, look I'm, I'm from the Father. I'm delivering something from God. From the Father. I'm delivering something from Not the from heaven. From the Father. I'm delivering something on his behalf. Listen to the words. Not from the Father. Not not from heaven. Yeah. From the Father. Yeah. Right? The angels exist in heaven. Okay, and so does God. We, we, we do believe that, yes. Yeah. But if it's coming from the Father, that means that it's coming from the uncreated. Yeah, God exists because he exists. But angels are created. Okay. So it can't come from the Father. It has to come from heaven if it's an angel. But it's been sent from the Father. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. The Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father. This is th th That word proceeds means that it's coming out. It's coming out of you. Like, like your words proceed from your mouth, yeah? That, that's the connotation that we've got here, proceeds. Now your words proceed from you, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. Do you see? Right? So this can't be an angel, because that would make it uncreated. Because... Can I, can I add to that, Bob? Let, looking at the Greek. That, yeah, go on. Yeah. Okay, so bit of a hard concept to grasp, but the actual Greek words used here are para tu patros. Now para is where we get parallel from in English, para. Para is not used in a merely geographical sense or a spatial sense, okay? So if I was saying, uh, you know, I send someone to go and tell something to someone else, the word I would use in Greek is meta, meta tu patros. In Greek it actually says para tu patros. Para tu patros means that there is an intimate relationship between the father and the one who is sent. I would agree with Para tu patros would mean something, you know, para is the word you would use if you were sending someone from within a certain location, okay? So when the, the, the Greek writers of the New Testament very specifically choose their language to indicate that not just that there's a ascending by the Father of the Spirit, but that the Spirit actually proceeds in an in essential way. From like your words proceed from you. Precisely, yeah. Or your emotions proceed from you. Exactly, okay. Or your thoughts proceed from you. So yeah. I think we're all on the same page. Yeah, but the angel Gabriel can't be that. Why? Because the that because that which proceeds from God has to be eternal. The angel Gabriel is eternal. The angel Gabriel is created. Okay, created to exist for eternity. Yeah. But if it's created, he's not eternal. Why? God can do that. You can't put rules on God. God, the, if someone if something is created, it means it starts somewhere in time. But, but it doesn't necessarily have to end. But God, eternal, but agreed, but, 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 but that's not what eternal means. Eternal means without beginning, without end. So God is without beginning and without end. He alone is eternal. Where do we get that definition from? It's just a common understanding of the word eternal. And it's the most logically consistent one when we're talking about God, when we're talking about the realm of cosmology and philosophy. You know what I mean? we, we participate in the divine energy because God will allow us eternal life. 
and so we become participants in the divine substance. But, but, the Holy Spirit is proceeding from the Father. So if we're created but we can also achieve eternal life, does your argument still stand? Yes, because, because our, our eternality is a, 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 a interaction with the divine energy. It isn't equivalent to the divine energy. We're not... Okay, but when, I didn't claim that Gabriel was, or Gabriel was okay. equivalent to the divine energy. But, but also, let, let's move on a bit. Let's move on a bit. Uh, I've got, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just because, just because I think... I think you're gonna you're gonna struggle. We we we're gonna struggle. I, I we say it, it says clearly that the Holy Spirit will proceed from the Father, right? From the Father, He will testify about Me. Truth it is, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send Him to you. Now Jesus Christ. Is claiming to send the Holy Spirit. Okay, how, how do you know that God wasn't speaking through Jesus at that point in time? Do you believe that Jesus... There you go, so it's God yeah, claiming to send it. Yeah, yeah, but that the Jesus Christ is also saying that I, he's going to send the Holy Spirit. He says it right there. I will send, I will send him send to, to you. But well, your esteemed colleague just said it was God speaking through Jesus. The Father and the Son, because the Son represents the Father, yes. the Father, the, the, the words of the Son are the words of the Father. I would disagree. Well, you, you would have to argue with Scripture. I will. There's a, there's a clear distinction between Father and Son. Yes, I agree. There is a clear distinction between Father and Son. Peace be with you, Pastor. Peace be with you. I'm just in, I'm just in a conversation. Thank you, Father. Yeah, give, let's call. Now I know you're in the UK. So, he's saying, the, the Son is saying that I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. I have many more things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Now, is the angel Gabriel guiding people today into all truth? No, but the revelation was made. It was guiding people to truth when it was made. Right. So the, the, the angel, but you've already admitted, and we agree, that the Quran's been changed. Right. So if, if we agree that the Quran's been changed, then we can no longer consider that revelation. But the Bible's been changed too. We Christians don't view the Bible like you view your Quran. That argument works against the Quran, it doesn't work against the Bible. You're arguing the Bible's the word of God, but the New Testament is the word no, of God. No, no, I said, no, no, I said, no, I said, I said that Jesus Christ is the word of God. Yeah, and this is Jesus Christ's teaching. Right, so Jesus Christ is the word of God to us. Okay. It's and a wait, very different concept. It's not a con different concept because you get the word of Jesus from here. No, the Jesus Christ, his actual bodily person, is the word of God. They're not going to take my word. They're not going to take my word. Okay, if that's that, what you want to say, yeah. And, I would and, argue it's God's and, representative no, of us. No, and I would agree with that. You see, th there's a difference between... There's a difference between an accurate description and a sufficient description and an optimally maximal accurate description. I can say that you're a man. That is an accurate description. If I said that you are a, might, or, or a pale skinned man with a beard who's about six foot, that is a more accurate description. If I went on to describe your entire nature as a human being down to your genetic code, that would be an optimally maximal sufficient description. So what you're saying, I agree with. But what I'm saying, it's everything you've said and more. And, and this is what we, we say to the Muslims. We agree with you, Jesus Christ is a man. But he is more than a man. Yep. And that's what I'm saying to you. What you're saying is right. Jesus Christ is the representative of the Father. But he's more than just the representative of the Father. He is, he is, he is God's word on earth. Have you got water, bro? I need water. I really need water. Could you get some? Yeah, bottle of water. So, uh, yeah, so he is the word of God, the literal embodiment of God's word on earth. Now, there's a, a reason for that. Because by being the literal word of God on earth, yeah, what that means is that there is a story that can be told about him that can be translatable into any language. Yeah, because we can tell his story. 
And it's that story that, that you, that we encapsulate here, right? So that story is captured in words, which means if a word here or there is changed, so long as the story remains the same, it doesn't damage our faith. Do you see how that works? I can see your logic, yeah. Yep. I don't necessarily agree, but I can see your That's logic. fine. So long as you can see my logic, then you can rightfully consider it. And that's all I'm asking you to do. Right? So it, now, I want to I just press on here in verse 12. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But what he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. So it's an active guidance. The Holy Spirit is guiding people into truth now, today. It's not a one-off event that happened in the past. It's a continuous event that happens from generation to generation. And he's leading them into greater truth. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. That's what the scriptures say. So this can't be Gabriel. No, yeah, no, I would agree. The Holy Spirit might even be here right now. You never know. He is in the church. <laughs> right now, bro, the Holy Spirit is reaching out to you. Okay. Right now, God is reaching out to you. He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. He wants you to know his truth. And this is why he's placed that desire for truth in your heart. That's why you inquire. That's why you ask questions. Because God has put that grace in you. And unlike many Muslims and many atheists and many agnostics in this corner who just resist that grace, you're cooperating with it. You are seeing where the light takes you. Good, right. And I'm asking you to be logical. Because if, if our statements are true, if our statements are true, ISIS, <laughs> like if, our, if, if, if our statements are true, yeah, then that means Islam is false. It means that you need to embrace the truth of the Christian faith. Okay, what if I was to say that Islam was a development on the revelation that was made in this book? I, I would point out to you that, that Muslims say that the Quran can't be changed and we know that it has. And therefore we have to dismiss the Quran and we have to dismiss Islam. The Prince of, the, the, the prince of Saudi Arabia this year, this very month, is on record as saying that we need to chuck most of the hadiths away. They universally accept the 27 books of the New Testament. They dispute over some verses, that's all. So there's more uniformity, conformity and, and unity amongst the Christians about the New Testament than there is about Muslims on their hadith. Cool, but hadith isn't the word of God. No, I would argue that it is. Hadith is just the, the, the sayings and Agreed. doings of the Prophet. I agree. But you use the hadiths to interpret the Quran, don't you? I mean, me personally, no, I hold them as two separate entities. Okay, but most Muslims do use the hadith to interpret the Quran, which means that when you have different hadiths, you're, you do your sharia differently. And if you're doing your sharia differently, what is that telling you? It's telling you that Islam isn't this unified thing. And that for 1400 years, uh, most Muslims have been doing their Islam wrong. Because you've got the Sunnis, you've got the Shia, and then you've got the Obadi. The Zaydiyah, and then a whole bunch of others. Now Christians, we're all united on our key doctrines. Like every single Christian, and I mean every single Christian, believes in the Trinity. What about the Unitarians? They're not Christians. Oh, you can't just say that. No, but it's you can't a just fact. Them out the club. They believe what? in Jesus, they just don't think he's No, God. but this is the point though. They don't believe in our Jesus. Because they don't believe that Jesus is God. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So they... And, and, and they're only 200 years old. They started in the 1800s. But Jesus has made clear distinctions in your book there that he's not God. He's just a representation, a representative, a word of God. I'm here to complete a mission. No, failed. I'm going to show you one place where Jesus says he's God. What is, what is it to be eternal? Well, I don't know. We've got different definitions of it. You're saying that us as humans can be eternal, have eternal life if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. Then you're saying Angel Gabriel can't be eternal because he was created. Yeah, anything that is created is not eternal. So us cannot be eternal. We can, we can, eternal. We can live, we can, we can participate in that eternal energy and that's why we can have what we call eternal life. Okay, how come Angel Gabriel can't? Gabriel he he, he does in our faith. And in ours as well. Right, but, but the point is, he's not eternal because he isn't create. He is created, and the bit say the, the the verse in question says that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. 
if he proceeds from the Father, that means he comes from that which is eternal. And if he comes from that which is eternal, he is eternal himself. But everything proceeds from the Father. No, no. God exists because he exists and then he created all this stuff. Yeah, but something that he's created doesn't proceed from God. It's created by God from nothing. It's his, the power of his word, he brings it into being. So when you use the analogy of my words precede me, or that when you said earlier, yeah. so I've not created my words. I haven't thought in my head I'm going to say this and then my words preceded. Yeah, because you are a created being. So everything that you do is created. Yeah. But because God is eternal, because God the Father is eternal, then that means that if the Holy Spirit proceeds from God the Father, that the Holy Spirit must also be eternal. Because anything that proceeds from the eternal is eternal. Yeah. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. Yeah, so but the angels are created by God. They are created from nothing. They don't proceed from God. So God creates them out of nothing. So you're saying that God and the Holy Spirit began their existence at the same time? That, that God and the Holy Spirit don't begin existence. They have always existed. So two separate entities that have both always existed? The, the, the Holy Spirit has eternally proceeded from the Father, like the Son is eternally begotten of the Father. Right. Think of it, let me use a, a picture metaphor to try and help you to rationalise it. In your mind, imagine a mountain. And in this mountain, imagine an immense underground lake. Yeah. And out of this lake, on one side of the mountain, erupts a stream that flows downhill. And imagine out of the other side of the mountain, erupts another stream and flows downhill. Okay. Now imagine that this lake is of eternal amounts of water. It can never run out of water. Yeah. That means that the, the rivers that erupt out of it are also never ending, agreed? Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Imagine that this, this, this water lake... Water will constantly flow, yeah. Exactly, and that's the relationship of the Father and the Son. You can distinguish them all. So you're right, they are distinguishable persons, but they are intrinsically connected in a continuous way that never ends. It can end. It, it doesn't end, bro. If God decides to make Jesus cease to exist, that's no. The father, the father would not and could not. Well, I'm not going to say could, but, but the father... You'd argue he would not do such a thing. I, I'm, but I'm, he has the power to... I am, to I'm going to hesitate to speak because I'm not a theologian, so I'm going to hesitate to speak theologically. Fine. But I will certainly say that in our faith there is no concept of the Son, of the Father, ending the Son's begottenness from himself. We don't have that idea. We believe in an eternal continuation of that, that movement. I'm yeah? just playing devil's advocate. Right. A few ideas but I, I just... No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I just want to show you something in the scriptures. It says... This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Now, let me ask you this question. What can come before the first? Zero. What can come before the last, after the last? Okay, fine, nothing, but perhaps right. he was wrong. So nothing can come after the last and nothing can come. Hi, how are you? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and so, nothing, nothing can come after the last, Eternity. and See? nothing, and nothing can come before the first. Right? So Jesus is saying that he is eternal. Yeah, but I would also argue God has the power to make Jesus cease to exist if but, he so desired. Well, I mean, Jesus was up there crying all day. Tech, tech, tech. <laughs> Take that up with the theologians. What I'm saying to you is in the, our faith, we don't believe that. Yeah? And I think there's probably a, a good theologian who can explain to you why, as Christians, we wouldn't believe that. But simply put, the Bible says no one comes before him, no one comes after him. Ergo, he is eternal. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree that Jesus is eternal. Yeah. Okay, so bro, if you believe that Jesus is eternal, yeah. and you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, 
then you're already a Christian in belief. I, I, yeah, but I, was, I wouldn't argue that he's exclusively the only eternal being or the only Messiah. I would then argue that there was another revelation with Prophet Muhammad. So, so, so here's the problem. I believe they both come from the same source. Here's the problem. If you believe that, that cause bro, honestly, you know by saying that you believe that Jesus is eternal yes. and that you say you believe that he is, um, that, that, that he's God's representative yes. in this way, you've already left Islam. You've become a Christian by this statement. Okay, so then explain to me about, the, Prophet, let me, about let me, Isa, Isa, Isa. I will do, I will do. But, but let me just, let me just go on to something, go on. which is that you need to now have the courage of your convictions and, and to stand with us and say, I am a Christian now. Are you ready to do that today? Okay, fair enough. But I, do, I do enjoy the debate. Okay, right, so when you're ready to do that, let me know and we'll, we'll get you into a good church. I, I came from a church today that already has four Muslims, young men like you that have all become Christian. I'm going to one of their baptisms in a month's time. I, I'm talking to two sisters in the north of England who are secret believers, Christians, in Muslim families, right? You're not going to be the first Chris Muslim to become a Christian. You're, you're not. My own fellowship, my own fellowship, not the one I came from today, my own fellowship ha has one, and we used to have two, but one of them moved away. And, and that was an entire family of Muslims. So lots of Muslims are becoming Christians, bro. You're not going to be the first. Christians are becoming Muslims. Right. So, so well, all I'm saying to you is you're not going to be the first Muslim to become a Christian. Yeah, yeah I understand. Right? So you're setting your uh, beliefs. And what I'm saying is you've already accepted our beliefs. So, but, but what, so what does the Quran say about Isa? I'm sure it would argue the same so, point. So let's, let's look at Isa. So the Quran says about Isa. Firstly, I, I just want to point out to you something. The use of the term Isa has absolutely nothing to do with Hebrew. Okay. That this is one of the proofs that proves that Islam is false. Well, the Quran had nothing to do with Hebrew. It was, it was exactly. A, it was a tribe out in uh, South. So why are they using a Greek loan word to speak of Jesus? Isa is a Greek loan word. It's not an Arabic word. Okay, but then why are you guys calling Jesus Jesus? Right, because we in our lang in our faith have no problem with translations. The thing is, you you've got you've got an issue in Islam that you use names without understanding where the origin of those names come from. There's absolutely no basis to call y Yeshua, which is this proper Hebrew name, Isa. No basis at all. Right, Jesus is at least uh, an English equivalent to Yeshua. It means Yahweh, Je Jehovah saves, or Jehovah's salvation. Like Yeshua means Yahweh's salvation. But Isa has got nothing to do with that at all. Okay? But Isa in the Quran says that Isa was just a prophet, that he was a word sent by Allah, but that meant he was created. So the Quran says that he's created. Whereas the Bible says he is uncreated. The, the, the Quran says that he was not crucified. The Bible says he was crucified. So with, with going back to that thing you said about created, we are, we, I thought we concluded earlier that the Father and the Holy Spirit are eternal and Jesus was created. No, we did not agree that Jesus is created. So wait, what, so I never agreed to that. Imagine, go back to that lake in your mind. I, I, yeah, I understand. Right? Imagine that the lake is timeless and infinite. Timeless and infinite. So uh, at the point of existence, Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the Father, were all, they all just existed? They have always just existed. All three of them, right? Yes. Okay, fine. Right? But in the same way that in this picture metaphor that we're using, the lake and the rivers are intrinsically connected. They're made of the same stuff. It's H2O in the lake, it's H2O in the rivers. We believe that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit... I want to give you something else so that we can talk on Skype. Yeah? Let, let me give you... Have you got a pen or paper or anything? No, I don't. I'll give you my number if you want. Just message me. Uh, my, my phone is literally dead. I'll message you on BTB. Uh, when are you going to do that? Tonight when I get back. Right. Email me tonight. Subject being what? 
just just let me know that it's you. Okay. So, the subject will be it's me. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then and then me and you can talk. Because okay. I think I think, bro, it's time that you you just just follow the convictions of your mind and heart. That's all you got. It's just about having that courage to go, do you know something? I believe this, so I'm gonna give my life to it. Yeah? And I, and I think it's time you do that. And like I say, I can introduce you to loads of Muslims who become Christians. There's actually two sisters. I'm looking to find them a Christian husband. Really? Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're Christians in Muslim families. So You're what's going to... marriage broker now. It would appear so. Are going to charge a small commission for that? No, it's totally a free service. As long as the good outweighs the bad on Judgment Day, I think we'll be all right. I don't think it works like that, bro. I would argue it does. Maybe I've got inside information. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're in for JC. I want to give two talks. That's the camera for you, bro. Right. I've okay. Got two cameras. So I have to operate that one and that one. So I'm going. All back right. And forth. Well, I, I maybe want to move this camera to do a talk in yeah, a bit more quiet. Yeah. Whatever you want. All yeah. right. Yeah. Just there. What is it? Good for battery and for Everything sound. Good. Are you sure? Yes. All right, bro. <laughs> All right. So yeah, he, he messed up the technics, te technicals uh, last week. So, so my point is to you, bro. Right. Like. It, 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 it's just, if you've got this conviction in your heart that Jesus is the eternal representative of God. One of, I'm not going to say exclusive. I agree. The Holy Spirit is another. And Prophet Muhammad. Well, this is where I would disagree, right? And the reason why I would disagree strongly yeah. is because the hadiths about Muhammad, we've, the, uh, Muslims are already chucking yeah, in the bin. They came 200 years later. Are we agreed that we're chucking them in the bin? I don't know about agreed, but I would say they came 200 years later from a guy that never met Prophet Muhammad. Agreed. And this is why we should chuck him in the bin. Okay, but then we, we need to and the crown And the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia agrees with me. We need to draw a clear distinction between Quran and... Uh, okay. So the next thing that I would say to you is that the, um, the, the, the Quran we both know has been changed. Now, me and you argue about how much it's been changed. You think a lot, I think a little. But regardless of which one of us is right, if it's been changed by so much as a word, then Muslims should dismiss it as being from Allah. Okay, but then I could make the same argument with the Bible about Mr. Paul. Right, so here's... New Testament. So again, remember what I said. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. And we can tell his story. So for us, what's important is not the actual words but the story if you now you and i both know you can tell the same story in different words agreed Agreed. and so long as the story is the same the difference in words is not important agreed uh, so long as the story remains the same i would disagree with that one so you think that the, if the story remains the same but the words have changed that means the story's changed Remember, yeah, you, I'm, can in, you can go into more depth and you can use more complicated semantics to tell the same story. Uh, and there would, there would definitely be... I difference. agree, I agree there is a baseline. Yeah, Bob went to the shop and bought a bottle of water. Bob woke up in the morning, brushed his teeth, got dressed, yeah. strolled to the shop. It was a relief. Well, well, let's put it this way. The, the, the Greek manuscripts are our baseline. So long as whatever we translate from the Greek manuscripts captures the truth of the story of the Greek manuscripts, then the translations are valid. Yeah? Even if they have different words. And the thing is, even if the Greek manuscripts themselves have different words, so long as they're telling the same story, again, that's fine. It, me and you, for instance, if we go away today and we tell the story of, of what happened here today, we're going to use different words. Of course, and we both have a different recollection of it as well. Agreed, but if those two recollections coincide, then th there's no problem. Okay. Even though we use different words, and even though we tell the story from different angles. And that's the point. In Christianity, it's like that. So changes to the Bible are not the problem that you think it is, because we don't believe about the Bible what you believe about the Quran. And that's what we believe, bro. So that's what that's that's what I'm inviting you to believe. Yeah, no, but I don't know. It doesn't make logical sense, Bob. What if the um... bro? It, it makes. What if, what, if, what if there's been stuff been put in the Bible that weren't originally there? 
Well, this is the point. And you guys are believing stuff. That this is the point. I, 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 let me deal with that question because there's multiple piece we wrote. Do you, can I, do you mind? Bro, so what I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to you is that, is that when we compare all these different manuscripts, what we see is, yes, there are differences to the text, but there's no differences to the text that compromise the story that's being told. None. Yeah, that's your argument. But it's also a fact. It's not fact. It's not factual. Well, it's well show, then in that case, what you have to do now is to show me a change to the Bible yeah. that comes. And, it, and, and as a Christian, it won't matter to you because we accept the authority of Paul, we accept the authority of Matthew, we accept the authority of Luke. They were all pseudonyms of Paul. And I'm afraid that's not true. The writing styles are different. The theologies are different. Johannine theology, like they, they have a different angle on the same story. Like if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, particularly the synoptic gospels, they are focusing, like let's just look at Mark, they are focusing in on that Christ is the suffering servant. If you look at Paul, he's saying, well, what do you do about that? So they're, they're doing def very different literary exercises. So you can't say that they're all pseudonyms of Paul. That just doesn't stack up literary, from a literary point of view. Paul could change his style of writing. Also, also, also the Gospels, the Gospels, some of the Gospels were certainly written after Paul, like John. And John's literature was written after Paul died. So again, you can't use that argument. You don't know that it was written after Paul died. Yes, we do. It might have just been re released after Paul was died, after Paul passed away. Well, I mean, there'll, there'll be some Christians that might even argue that, to be fair. I think that that, that is a minority perspective. So my point to you is that you're not going to find anyone of any learning who agrees with the idea that Paul wrote the entirety of the New Testament. There's no one on earth that thinks that, who's looked into it except you. I promise you, bro. Including, if I may add, anti-Christian scholars like Bart Ehrman. Yeah. Even he would not claim that the whole of the New Testament... And Bart Ehrman has made a career out of attacking Christianity. Yeah. So if he, could, if he could use that argument, he would do. But he hasn't. And the reason why he hasn't is because he knows it's not true. Right. Now, the thing is, bro, the, the entirety of the New Testament, right, okay, we can date to 90 AD or before, right? So if there was some kind of corruption of the New Testament, like from an original Injil, we should find some kind of evidence of this original Injil existing. But we find zero evidence of it. No one ever talks about it. No one ever quotes it. No one ever, you know, we've got no evidence of an early Muslim community that followed a Jesus of Islam. There's zero evidence to any of these claims. They're all spurious claims that are made from the 7th century onwards. I, I, would, I would argue that what the Muslims believe is that Isa was the Jesus you're talking about, but the story got changed. Then Prophet Muhammad... But they have no evidence. His, his, uh, got his revelation. My point to you is there's got no evidence. The Quran. But the Quran's been changed. So has the Bible. Right, but in our religion, remember what I'm saying to you, and this is because we're repeating ourselves I know, now. I know, I know, but just so I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to stop, uh, bring this to a close because we're starting to repeat Go ourselves. On. First things first. We believe something. I am inviting you to believe something different about the Bible than you, what you, what how you've been taught to think about the Quran. Okay, and I we believe. We believe that it's the message that has to be secure, not the wording of the message. But the wording is the message. S no, you can say the same message in different words. Okay, and we both know that. Right. So, so that's not an argument. So just pointing to different variant words in the early manuscripts does not invalidate our faith. That means, it means nothing at all. What you've got to demonstrate is that one Bible says one thing entirely different from another Bible. And I'll help you. There are Gospels that come much later that try to do that. But we identify that they come much later. Which means that no one believes that they're original. None of them. Uh, just because people don't believe it, that doesn't mean it's not necessarily the case. Bro, if the, if the Gnostic Gospels that come about in the 2nd and the 3rd century were, were, were being quoted 
you know, uh, uh, were around in the first century, yeah. there would be there would be some kind of um, use of that text in the first century. There'd be some kind of engagement with it, but there isn't. The engagement comes much later, which means that those texts didn't exist. It's like the fake Muslim Gospel of Barnabas. It's fake, and we know it's fake because it, it gets its geography wrong. It gets its history wrong. It talks it about it talks about barrels of wine. Barrels of wine wasn't invented until much later. In the first century, they used to use wine skins. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so the reality is, bro. None of these other things have the the weight of history on their side. And the church is quoting all four gospels from the first century onwards. Irenaeus, Polycarp, Papias. They're, they're all pa Papias. Yes, they're, they're all quoting the gospels that we believe in uh, from the first century. <coughs> the Diatessaron. <coughs> no, the Didache. Sorry, that's a Didache is a first century document. It's 90 AD and it quotes the New Testament I believe in. So, so this, these other texts, they come much, much later. Now, the, the thing that I want to leave you with before I stop, because I'm about to choke because of hay fever, is are you going to follow the evidence? That's the question you've got to wrestle with. Will you follow the evidence? Have you got the courage to follow the evidence? I'll definitely do more research into it and okay. we can continue this debate. Well, you've got my email. I do indeed. You're going to email me, right? But bro, you've already accepted our beliefs. Now you just have to have the conviction to say, these are my beliefs and I stand on them. Yeah, and then I also would argue that Prophet Muhammad was a representative. Well, let's make, when, when we talk about that, right, when we talk about that, our, our meeting on Skype yeah, yeah, yeah. or via email, let's make that the topic. Thank you for your time. You have a good day. Have I introduced you to my uncle Yusuf? No. He's very knowledgeable on these topics. I would love to talk we to him. We call him Muhammad as well. Yeah, let's talk to him. Cool. Let's talk to him. <coughs> Brother, here's Sam. Is it, is it, yeah, we spoke a few months ago. I wasn't sure if it was you or not, because last time I saw you it was winter and you were not having up. Peace with you, bro. Blessed Trinity. Peace be with you. Watching some of your videos. I'm a fan of your videos. Thanks be to God. Say hello. Thank you. Thank you. Peace with you, bro. Peace with you, bro. Right. Wrap up. So a quick wrap up. I wasn't really going to come today, to be honest. <laughs> but you know, I can't keep away. Um, uh, we had a talk with a brother who, who, to all intents and purposes, has accepted what Christians believe, and he just needs to have the courage of his convictions and to call himself a Christian and to walk as a disciple of our Lord. Basically, if you look into what a Messiah is you realize that a Messiah is a cosmological figure in the Jewish religion. Jesus Christ is the only standing candidate from history that can rightly claim to be the Jewish Messiah. There is no other candidate. And because the temple has been destroyed, there can be no other candidate. And Christians believe that Jesus Christ, that cosmological figure is eternal which means that he is more than a prophet. Exactly. Muslims describe something accurate about Muhammad when they say that Maha Jesus was, a, sorry, they describe something accurate about Jesus when they say Jesus was a man. Yes. But Jesus was more than a man. Yep, yep. And, and Muslims just have to look into a, what a Messiah is. Look into what it is and then see that your own religion doesn't have any proper description of a Messiah. Exactly. And that means, guys, you've got to understand that when the Quran calls Isa Christ, yeah. it's using a term that it doesn't understand. Yeah, understand. But if you take the time to understand it, you will realize that Islam is false and Christianity is true. Perfect.